Good afternoon and welcome to Grain TV. It's November 15th, 2013. To my left is Logan Burgess and I'm Brock Shimano. We had a negative tone to end the week in Chicago. Let's turn with a fire tip to see how we ended. Corn was down four and a half cents. Soybeans, the leader to the downside, down 33 cents. Wheat in Chicago off a quarter penny and Kansas City wheat was off four and three quarters as well. You know, Logan, if we take a look at that uh, January contract with the daily candlesticks here, you can see that that last bar that we have, we broke through some key technical support levels. First, we broke through the 50-day moving average, which is the red line here. Next, we broke through that 100-day moving average, which was the blue line. And then last of all, we broke through that $13 support yeah. level. Uh, we thought that was going to be support, but we ended up ultimately going down, ending the day about 1279 right above the 200-day moving average, which is sitting right around 1275 or so. Yeah, you know, certainly a very weak day today from a technical aspect. And if you kind of want to look at where uh, some of this weakness started, I think that we need to go back to yesterday's action. Take a look here uh, at the candlestick that we printed for yesterday. Uh, this is what the traders call a doji symbol. And basically, it's where we traded higher, we traded lower during the trade session, but we, tr we ended the trade session right about where the open was. Not a big daily change in terms of price. Technical traders look at that as an indication uh, that there's a lot of uncertainty about price direction and certainly coming on the heels of five or six positive days in soybeans, uh, any uncertainty about price direction generally means that we're due to see uh, a bit of a retracement here. So I think from a technical aspect, things started on kind of a weak footing. We didn't get great export sales reported. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But one other uh, factor that I think really needs to be focused on is what we saw yesterday after the market closed in the cash market. Take a look here at this chart. This details average spot soybean basis against the January 14 futures contract. And you can see here just in the last couple of days, we've really seen basis come off one or two cents. It might not sound like a big move, but that's a very big move to see uh, over a one or two day period here when looking at the national average. If we look at a couple key processing plants, we saw basis down 10 to 15 cents yesterday. So in general here, I think we saw kind of the bottom fall out of the cash market. It's not unreasonable to think we're going to see basis weaken when futures rally, but a move like that, I think, is an indication that the futures may be uh, due for a move lower. So you add that into kind of the technical landscape. We certainly saw a lot of new shorts being added into the market today, in addition to a lot of longs that were being taken off uh, that were in a profitable position after the November 8th WASDE report. So I think, you know, on net, that's kind of what we saw in today's action. Wouldn't be surprised if we saw a little bit more of a retracement uh, next week there in the soybean market. You know, we could see basis actually pop up just a little bit. We did see a significant sell-off in the futures. Yep. A lot of times you'll see end users start to bid up basis just to counteract some of those future losses. Yep. And one area that we could focus on is maybe on the crush facilities. We did get the NOPA crush numbers out today, and that was very strong. If you take a look here at the, the actual numbers that were reported, you can see that last column uh, for October, we came in at 157 million bushels being crushed during the month of October when ex expectations were for about 154 million. So we came in well above expectations. That really should have supported the market, but I think what you highlighted earlier, the weak cash basis already, and the, the technical landscape that we were looking at, that really allowed the door to open up and move lower for the soybeans on the futures. But something that is concerning here is the soy oil stocks are continuing to remain very tight right now. Yep. Uh, we are actually even tighter than what analysts were expecting. So I would look for uh, crushers to continue to, to crush uh, soybeans at a very rapid pace over the next couple of months. Yeah, you know, and today's crush number for soybeans as well, you know, some traders, I think, you know, you and I were talking about this before the show. Some people kind of view this as more of just confirmation of good crush, not necessarily a new uh, bullish story here for the soybean market. So that might have been one reason why we didn't see the soybean crush numbers uh, really work to prop up soybeans in today's action. When these numbers came out, we saw a little bit of a price response for beans, but uh, it was really short lived. And then we just proceeded to, to move lower there into the close. You know, it, it was kind of a, a fundamental buffet today, if I can use that word, um, in terms of what we got on the demand side. As I said, we did get export sales this morning as well. Not a great uh, day in terms of sales for soybeans. Um, 848,000 tons reported sold there. Wheat had a relatively weak week uh, there in terms of export sales, missing analyst expectations. The one bright spot was the corn sales coming in at 1,200,000 tons. Uh, so in general, though, it seems like the weakness in beans really spilled over into soy, uh, corn and wheat here in today's action. Uh, with that in mind, Brock, where do we stand right now in terms of the pace needed to meet USDA expectations? Yeah, if we take a look at the chart, we've been uh, following all marketing year long. The red line here is the seasonal pace to meet those revised expectations by the yep. USDA. And what we're looking at here is the corn chart. 
Um, the blue bar is actually what we saw this week for, for sales of corn. You can see that we, over the last few weeks, we've been very good on export sales for, for corn. Um, currently on the year, we're running about 190 million bushels ahead of that revised pace by the USDA. So very strong corn sales, yep. especially over the last several weeks here. Soybeans, uh, you know, we met expectations here once again this week, um, but we have started to taper off just a little bit, and that's typical. Uh, for, for this time of year, soybeans, we tend to front load our sales, right. our export sales, and start to drift lower throughout the remainder of the year. We'll have to see if there's any problems with South American production. We could see more export sales come onto our books. Yeah. But as it stands right now, I would imagine that we're going to start to drift a little bit lower on export sales for soybeans. So that's another reason that we could see soybean prices come down just a little bit here over the next couple of weeks as well. You know, on the year for soybeans, we're running about 297 million bushels ahead of pace to meet the USDA projections. But like I said, that's mostly front loaded. We should yeah. see that fall as we move throughout the marketing year. Yeah, you know, in general here over the next couple of weeks, certainly demand is going to remain a really key focus here for the soybean market. And a huge component of that demand is the state of the South American crop. Certainly right now, uh, they're getting well underway planting in both Argentina and Brazil. So, uh, you know, like I said, as we enter winter, typically we see the focus really turn uh, to South America. And I think if this soybean market is going to make a new low, the new uh, make a low, uh, a lower price than what we saw coming into the November 8th WASI report, uh, that could be on the heels of some good uh, planting expectations out of South America. So we'll help keep you posted on there uh, as we move through the coming weeks here on Grain TV. In general, though, that's what we saw here for a Friday in the grain market. Certainly a lot of weakness out of soybeans, corn and wheat had a relatively quiet day. Wouldn't it be surprising if we saw a little bit more weakness out of soybeans next week as well. We'll have to see what it brings though. As always, we'll be back here on Monday to report it to you here on Grain TV. Thanks for joining us, have a great weekend.